Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Mike Makes It. We're in the garage. We're having a look over some trend equipment that's been uh, delivered to me. I'm doing some work off site for a client and he supplied this for me to use. Not to keep, sadly, but there you go. That's not a problem. Um, just running through it very quickly. Box of 15 tungsten carbide tip bits for the T11 router. Uh, they're half inch shank on those. We've got heavy duty door lifter. I'll show you that. That looks nice. Nice bit of kit. Got a lock jig, uh, literally bolt onto the side of the door or clamp it to the side of the door. Um, set the right uh, template in it. Use the router. It takes all the hard work out of uh, preparing a door. Uh, door stand so that you can put the door on this edge or upright or actually freeze the door in place so it doesn't move uh, when you're doing some work on it. We'll get all these out of the box in a minute. Little bits down the front, free pencils, I believe. There's a collet there to convert the T12, uh, sorry, the T11 uh, to a quarter inch shank, which is handy because with the door lock jig, you get a quarter inch shank uh, tungsten carbide tip that you need to uh, drill out the lock hole. So um, we needed that collet. The collet's 30 pounds, I'm laughing, 30 pounds for this. But hey, there you go. Uh, when you route the hinges or write the hinges out, it leaves a radius corner. Now this tool, uh, again, we'll get out the box. One blow of hammer and you've got a nice square corner on the hinge. This was a free gift. Uh, for the money they spent, they ought to give us more. But this will check your depth of the router. Uh, could also use it for a circular saw. So I may hang on to that. We'll, we'll look at that. Uh, and what we got here, we got a Euro lock cylinder. So the client actually wants the Euro lock in his door. So uh, that's the template uh, specifically for that. So right, I'll shift all this off. We'll open box by box uh, to give you a little insight of what you get in the boxes. Um, there may be a follow up video of me actually using some of this, um, but currently it's literally an unboxing what you get for your money. And I tell you what, you all have a cream cake in here. This is £300 plus the T11, so it's not a cheap bit of kit. But if it's like my T7, it's worth the money. But yeah, get them off the bench and we'll open them box by box for you. I'll start with a simple one. This door stand. Let's get out the box. You've got a little bit of reflection off the lights above, so forgive me for that. Nice and simple. Uh, you got rubber mounts all the way around, so you just can't mark the floor, which is nice. Your door basically fits in there. Uh, clamp it up gently, so you can have the door laid down on its side, which would probably be the more appropriate way of using this. Or you could have the door upright. Um, it wouldn't be quite sec as secure, I don't think. Um, you could also leave the door hinged, leave it actually on the frame and push this under the door. So long as you've got enough room to get under the door, pop that under the door, clamp it up, then the door can't move on you and you can work on the side of the door uh, if you wanted to put hinges in or the hinges are on the other side of course. If you want to put the lock in, um, you can work on it. Even if you wanted to paint the door or ju just put door handles on it, basically the thing, this thing will immobilize the door. But I would use this more readily if the door was on its side, on the floor, and you're doing the hinges or the locks. Uh, I think it's 33 to 55 millimeters door it will take. Uh, I think I read that somewhere on here. Uh, yeah, well, 32 to 55. So as long as your door is within that size, then that would be great for you. So that's your door stand or immobilizer. Now I've got a lock jig here. Now if you've ever put locks into doors, you know how difficult it can be. Now with this, there's a box of 15 different jigs just in this box to suit the uh, what is, if, if that's flashing in the in from the light. I'm sorry. Uh, 15 different jigs to suit the the lock you're actually fitting. Plus there's a couple extras here, loose, and there's one in the jig itself. 
uh, is simple a matter of adjusting these three catches there bear with me then you can alter for the width of the door or the position of the lock and these will clamp the the door appropriately once you've adjusted these depending on the jig it's magnetic there so it's dead easy just to swap the jigs over so this door today another door tomorrow as i say it's not a huge in-depth look at this it's just showing you what's in the box and that does seem well equipped that one 15 piece router set router set i should say by trend half inch shank look okay the plastic case is a bit mm, it's, it stores the bits don't get me wrong um but it, it does feel a little bit pants but the bits look uh, really nice and that's the main thing you're going to be cutting with these bits and not the box so uh, there's 15 in the box there i'll put links in the description uh to where this was purchased from and the prices just so you can follow up if you wish let's get that out the way these little bits excuse the head in the way right pack of pencils i think you know what to do with those uh this lock this is quite clever this is something i wish i had had a few years ago when you write a hinge out because the bit is obviously round you get a radius corner uh, with this i don't know if you can see that coming out there's the cutter so you move this up to the corner this this um been radiused by the tip or the bit and whack it on the top with hammer and you've got a basically it's a square chisel and it'll cut that radius corner out so you end up with nice square hinges you could do it manually with the chisel but one blow of the hammer and you're done this is um, the jig tip or the tip that comes with uh, the jig for routing the lock out one thing i haven't said with the t11 yet it's got 80 millimeter plunge depth and you need that for doing um, the lock barrels because they go fairly deep into the door uh, I won't take that out of the box. That suits a T11. Uh, as I say, that's a collar that takes the the uh, what well, takes the size of the router from tw uh, half an inch down to quarter inch, and that's suitable for the bit I just showed you. Depth gauge. This came free. I don't think it's that expensive to buy if you wanted to buy it, but that's simply depth gauge for the router bit or the router bit. And while I keep saying router and router. Let's get the sticky off the back so there you go i'll maybe able to show you that in action later but you can measure there's a lock on there by the looks so you can set your your depth gauge or your depth of the cut a uh, little bit chinksy plasticky but it'll get the job done not digital you can get digital one of them if you pay the money and this is a jig um, for a euro lock i don't think you can use it for a lot else uh, but if you've got a euro lock this is a jig you're going to want for it feels well made looks nice it's some sort of uh paxlin it's not plastic it's not metal something in between but um yeah i'm sorry i can't tell exactly what it's made of but it looks good it does actually look quite good quality but if you only got one euro lock to fit hmm do you spend this money on it yeah i, I probably would <laughs> but that's me right this is nice little thing get that out the box lift the old doors get the idea foot on the end here oh there you go keeps kids happy for ages that would You've got a, a red tab on here and the idea is your foot sits on the back the heel of your foot um front of your foot sits there and you can control it as well so you've got this movement and up and down i've got a cheaper version of this 
and you can tell that th this is uh, in comparison nice bit of kit so uh, yeah that's very handy moving doors around and the final item of the day if we can get it out the box comes in a nice case again it's a bit plasticky for my liking but then you know I might be fussy yeah probably book of words long cable I, I'm guessing three meters could be longer there you go let's take all the bits and bobs out and we'll have a little bit closer look on the bench of this one bear with me Well, there, you, there you go there's a T11 on the desk it is a nice bit of kit by the looks of it very heavy duty in the sense it feels well built I think it's going to last it's got a nice extra features built in which um, on the 7 you've got to add bits to it you've got a depth stop here simply wind that down to where you need it um, you may want to pre-measure so you know where you are going with it uh, but yeah twiddle that down there's a depth stop effectively here you can see me moving that up and down there's a locking lever here turn that that'll stop this moving on its own there's a fine adjust on the end so you can turn that up and down a little bit to give you that little tiny you know, I, I've had it when I had to take a fraction of the wood off um, and it is possible with the adjustment adjuster that I've got, but this is much better. It's all built in a uh, little turn and you've got that extra depth. Uh, something else which is nice, uh, you've got a little rotary table here. I'll call it a rotary table. Let me get that depth stop out of the way. Got three preset positions. That'll turn around on you. And there's a detent. You can feel it. It wants to stop there. Click around again. And again it wants to stop now you may not have enough scope here for the travel you require or you may not want to move this too much or you may simply uh, decide that plunge is what you want on that pass turn that round that could be a second pass and that could be a third pass so you wouldn't even have to adjust anything I do like that you have got a, 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 a shall I say a very fine adjuster here um, I got a similar version I'm afraid I keep going back to mention the T11 but I'm comparing it to that and this is like an adjuster I had to pay extra money for uh, but it's included obviously with this uh, device got a spanner that fits on the top as you turn that probably won't be able to see that too well but that's actually lifting the router up turn it the other way it winds it down you've got a th threaded bar effectively into a captive nut this end rotates but doesn't move in the sense of it doesn't lift out but this nut will move up and down the thread and depending on how much and which way you turn this it'll alter the depth of cut so I, I do like that we go over the top or oh, before we do you got like um, a magnifier if you like to look at the scale that's a bit chinese -ium. I don't like um, it's not clear um, I shall say you can read it don't get me wrong you can read the scale let's see if we can get it on camera you can read the scale but it's a bit blurry um, I'd like to see that clearer but that's that's only my first observation um, let's turn this round and what I'm looking for here that's your locking lever for the plunge so I'm holding that down by hand if I let go it goes back up pull that across 
let's go the other way with it and it locks so that's nice uh, T7 has got it built into the handle so uh, multi-function but this is easily accessible for people who are right-handed now me being left hand won't make any difference um, I can still nicely get to that so bang done so um, yeah you can see so that's quite good what else can I show you on this uh, once I've used it for a little while I may come back and tell you about it you get a few gauges here I wouldn't say gauges that's the wrong word but these bars will fit in here sorry for the clanking and clash in there these bars will fit in there that'll fit on there like so and uh, you can wind this in and out so if you're running parallel to a board for instance if you wanted to route a, a groove out of this board that would fit there and the jolly old router would go there router would go there and it would uh, keep its position parallel with the edge of the wood or the work you're working with so you get all the little adjustments in it in with it bag of bits there uh, this is a fine adjuster I believe getting the T7 out something like that uh, do you know I'm not sure on that one that may not be oh it is it is yeah I'm put it together um, that piece this will fit onto it in some way or other uh -huh. Michael work it out in a second this might not be today there we go and this will give you uh, I think this is micrometer adjustment they, they call it on the 7 but you basically you can wind this body in to the router um, in very small increments uh, so rather than having to undo the screws here push the bars in which would be a bit well have I moved it in enough or haven't I you got very fine adjustment here so you can go in just a half a mil or even less uh, which which is a nice function you can do a precise cut with it well for now that's about all I can tell you on that one and all the other equipment when I fired it up and running I might be able to uh, give you a bit more of an insight on it uh, if you right okay well yeah what more can I say you know how to use a pencil well if you find that useful please give me a thumbs up um, I will come back I believe if I get a chance showing you this in action but yeah if you want to spend your money on a good bit of kit I think this might be it you can buy cheaper routers don't get me wrong there are cheaper ones on the market but I've had a few of them and you're wasting your money but trend in general I think is fairly good bit of kit so I don't think you'd be disappointed anyhow thanks for watching